Hey guys, hope you are well. If you are new to this channel, you may not know that earlier this year I briefly tested the amazing Fujifilm Xperor 3. Those couple of days with this camera left me in a true state of excitement. I liked the build, usability and overall shipping experience. So I saved up and got my own in the beautiful silver finish. And after using it over the last two months, I want to tell you why you may want to consider the older, smaller and only slightly less capable XE3 instead. But first of all let me say that for me this still is an excellent camera for basically all kinds of stills photography. People of the internet call it a street camera but I see no reason why it is not as good for travel, landscape or event photography. And if you search on YouTube or Instagram, you will find photographers using the Expro series cameras for basically everything. The slight issue for me is that for the last two years I have owned and shot with the XE3. And when I compare the features I use the most, there is not much more that the Expro 3 offers to justify the difference in price. For example, I have not become a fan of the optical viewfinder and see no benefit it offers outside of low light situations. I know I can turn on the little EVF in the right bottom corner, but then I feel like I'm supposed to do two things at once. Compose my shot in the OVF and at the same time to check if the focus is right in the little EVF. This is not practical in situations where your subject is moving or is not completely still or when you just want to capture a fleeting moment. So the alternative is to use just the optical viewfinder and hope that I had my subject focused well or simply switch this lever and use the big and bright EVF which is what I use in 99% of situations. And I must say that I have enjoyed it much more than the smaller and tunnel-like EVF in the XE3. Still, the XE3 EVF is perfectly usable and you will not notice how small it is without a direct comparison with something bigger. The tilting LCD on Xpro 3 has great touchscreen and allows to comfortably take low-angle photos. And although I love the idea of having it hidden most of the time, I also like to think I have enough willpower to just turn off any non-hidden LCD and not chimp on every single shot I take. Actually, I know that I have because too much chimping was not a problem when using the XE3. Also, sometimes I just want to grab my camera and take a photo using LCD. There are situations when it just makes sense and it's more convenient and comfortable over using a viewfinder. With Xpro 3, I have to first open the screen, which is fine but it's adding another step between grabbing the camera and taking the photo. It's the little things. With Xpro 3, it's nice to have ISO dial on top of the camera, but I quickly realized it's best to set it to C and change ISO with the front dial. This is how I shoot. It works for me on XE3 as well, but I completely understand it may be different for you that you may want to use all the classic dials on the top of the camera. But for my style of shooting, I see no reason to change my approach since the, since the ISO ring doesn't stay up when lifted. So if I want to go from, for example, ISO 200 to 1600, I have to lift and turn the dial twice. The Xpro 3 is well made and definitely feels more solid than the XE3. The materials are much better thanks to the use of titanium on top and bottom plates. All buttons at, on the back of the camera have nice click and I love the simple layout they achieved by taking away the D-pad. Which by the way they've done on the XE3 as well and much earlier. What I don't like is how far from the grip is the button for exposure and focus lock. I use the exposure lock often and in the last two months of using the camera I have not gotten used to it. Often I had to take my eye away of the viewfinder 
to see where the button is. On XE3 I have not had this problem because the button is much closer, probably more thanks to smaller camera body than anything else. Talking about size, I do like the size and hold of the XE3 with the additional grip and I think it works better than the integrated grip on the X-Pro3 when using heavier lenses. Although the materials are better on X-Pro3 and the camera feels nicer in hand, it doesn't feel as secure to hold with for example the 16mm f1.4. I guess it's best to use the X-Pro3 with the trio of Fujicrons or with uh, the 35mm f1.4. On the other hand, the XE3 with the additional deeper grip makes things much easier even with bigger lenses and doesn't make the overall package bigger than an, any X-Pro camera. I, and I almost feel bad for bashing this beautiful camera this way. The X-Pro line of Fujifilm cameras have almost a cult following and I don't want to sound like I do not appreciate how great piece of engineering and design this is. And I am really happy that Fujifilm has taken this bold move and made all the changes we see in the final product. Still, nothing is perfect and there are many great cameras to choose from, especially at this price level. I will certainly keep my X-Pro3 because it's, it's just nice to hold, especially with this lens, and it produces great images. But so does the X-E3. So is it worth the upgrade? Let me say it this way. If you know you will or already like the idea of using the optical viewfinder and that you really need your camera to be weather sealed, then go for the X-Pro3. Probably better in the black version. If on the other hand, you are used to using only electronic viewfinder and appreciate smaller camera body, then keep your X-E3 and use the saved money for some nice lens. And I'm not saying this because X-Pro3 is a bad camera, far from it. It's because the older and slightly less capable X-E3 is so good. Have a nice day and I will see you with the next one.